Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at generalized least squares with stats models. So let's get started. So to begin, let's go on and get our imports in. So import stats models.api as sm. Then we're going to go on and uh, the data set we're grabbing is the Longley data set and it is a uh, time series, okay? So time series. <clears throat> now a couple things that we'll do. So data is equal to sm.datasets.longly. All right, and dot load. And we are actually going to set as pandas uh, equal to false this time. We're going to play a little bit with it. And then our data dot exog, so for our exogenous variables, is going to be sm.add const or constant in this instance. Uh, and then we'll do uh, data dot exog, okay? So for exogenous, because again, this data set itself has um, a, an, an exogenous variable to it. So then we want that exact same size to it. Now let's go on also, and we're going to, uh, there's a couple things that we have to do, okay? With this uh, data set, we, ha we have a little bit of uh, some assumptions that we need to make, okay? And we need to um, believe okay and have this uh, generalized assumption that the data itself is heteroscedastic so let me go on and pull up uh, this and so the the word kind of let's say that the word of the day is going to be heteroscedastic so let me put, actually spell that out for us hetero scedastic Okay, and again, and this is, uh, we know the nature of something that is called heteroscedasticity. Okay, and so let's actually maybe do a quick kind of definition and talk about what heteroscedastic actually means, okay? So, <clears throat> when we talk about this, is think about heteroscedasticity as the absence of homoscedasticity. So that means that um, this heteroscedasticity is that uh, if there's a variability of some random disturbance and it's different across all elements of the vector, okay? So variability could be quantified as the variance of a measure um, or any other measure of statistical dispersion, okay? Now, um, this is a major issue, okay? A lot of the times with regression analysis and the analysis of variance. Now, this also invalidates a lot of statistical uh, tests of significance that assume that the, uh, that the modeling errors also have the same variance, okay? So, uh, while ordinary least squares that we've talked about in the past is an unbiased in the presence of heteroscedasticity, okay? It is insufficient and uh, generalized least squares uh, should be used instead, okay? So that's why in this instance, uh, we're gonna be using uh, generalized least squares. Uh, so, let's actually go on and actually uh, continue on with um, our example. Now we <clears throat> need to, uh, let me actually pull this back up here. Um, I want the screen now. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. So it's not as small. Now a couple things we also want to assume here, okay? We're going to define a uh, sigma. So I'm gonna say OLS uh, resid. Okay, for our residuals is sm.ols, uh, data dot our endogenous variable, data dot exogenous variable, dot fit, dot resid. Okay, we're gonna run that and whoops, um, in dodge. There we go. Um, <clears throat> now, a couple of things that we want to uh, kind of assume, and I'm gonna go back to. Uh, this a little bit here. Besides our uh, heteroscedasticity that we're assuming, we also need to assume uh, that the error term follows an AR1 process. So, whoops, um, an AR1 process. Okay, <clears throat> uh, with a trend. Okay, so with trend. So again, usually at times when we talk about um, time series analysis or those types of things, again, we're always gonna be talking about some sort of trend. And this itself is, so for example, we have our residuals or some error is gonna be uh, beta naught plus rho. Uh, let's call this uh, some error again, minus one. So with this i minus one plus eta of i. And here, uh, 
where let's say that eta itself is going to be some approximation of the space of 0 to sigma squared. Okay, and then um, this, this uh, row value in here, okay, is simply the correlation between the residual uh, uh, and uh, consistent estimator, okay, and row uh, is going to be the regress, the residuals on the lagged residuals. Okay, so this is the residuals, okay, this is the lag residuals. So again, this is that I minus one. And so sometimes we may want to do this T instead to think about it in terms of T. Um, now let's go on and actually go back over to our main. And uh, let's actually take a look at this. So our residual fit in here is going to be SM dot OLS. Uh, OLS here, our resid, uh, the first through the end. And we also want SM dot add constant. And here, OLS resid. Uh, and we want this all the way to the end. Dot fit. And then, uh, oops, resid, resid, there we go. Resid. Oh, uh, oh, oh, it was this one. Oh, last resid. There we go. <clears throat> now, let's actually take a look and see what um, these resid fit values actually are. So let's do something like uh, print um, resid fit um, and then dot t values of one. And we'll do something like print resid fit dot p values of one. Can run this, and again, um, we don't have any strong evidence that the errors are going to follow some AR1 process. Um, but uh, so we can are, are also going to continue. Let's actually go on and predict up that uh, row value. Uh, so resid fit dot params of one. Uh, and let's go on and um, I'm going to print row for now just so we can take a look at it. Now, as we know, again, some AR processes uh, means that the nearest neighbors, near neighbors, have a strong relation. Okay, so we can give this structure by looking at the uh, toplets matrix. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go into scipy. So from scipy dot linear algebra import in here the toplets okay uh, and then what we'll do is we'll do something like uh, toplets let me because I want to show you guys this uh, toplets what um, let's do range of five okay and here you can actually see a little uh, toplets matrix okay so we actually want to do this though instead of on this range and here we'll do the range of our length of our uh, residuals so let's do order is equal to the toplets range length here of OLS resid okay and then <clears throat> so that our error um, uh, covariant structure is going to be some row to whatever order this is. Okay, so um, let's. This is going to define our autocorrelation structure. So let's do uh, sigma is equal to row to the order. Okay, uh, and so I let me actually cut this out and let's do print order. So here you can see here. This is what our order would technically be. So our sigma, again, is going to be this. Our GLS model is equal to sm dot GLS data dot endodge data dot exodge, uh, and we'll do sigma is equal to sigma. Okay, and let's go on and fit the model itself. So let's do our generally least squares results is equal to our GLS model dot fit. 
<clears throat> and of course, um, the exact row is uh, in this instance is not going to be known. Um, so it might make it, it might make a little bit more sense for us uh, to use um, feasible GLS, okay, uh, which currently only has some experimental support within uh, stats models, okay. Um, so we can actually use something um, a little bit different. So let's let's that's actually using the uh, GLSAR, um, but we'll also just maybe look here at the results. So GLS results um, dot summary. Okay, and again here it's it's going to give us this a uh, little bit of a warning in here because of some of this. Uh, oh, here it looks like there's the warning on our ketosis test. Um, but you can see here that again, we just, this is just some generalized uh, data that we have here. It's not necessarily, again, our, our prediction is gonna be relatively okay given our um, R squared and our adjusted R squared values. But again, I would suggest uh, using the uh, uh, GLS AR model for this instance. And that would be um, in order for us to get that lag value. So GLS AR, is uh, model is going to be our uh, sm dot glsar data dot dodge data dot exodge with a lag of one um, glsar and this is model in here and we want our results to equal the glsar model dot uh, iterative fit. fit of one, uh, and then let's go on and do GLSAR results dot summary. And again, it's going to give us uh, a little bit of a warning here, but we're going to ignore it for now. Um, <clears throat> so comparing, let's actually maybe go on and maybe compare um, the results a little bit, okay? Um, and let me, let's just uh, throw out both of the parameters really quickly. So print GLS uh, results dot params. Uh, and then we'll do uh, print GLS uh, AR results dot params. Um, and then let's do print uh, GLS results dot BSE. And then print GLS AR results.bsc. Now, um, again, when we compare these results, we're going to see that there are small differences in here, okay, uh, within the parameter estimates themselves. Now, the results of these standard errors, which are going to be, I probably need to, maybe let me print up um, just a nice line here so that we can see between them for you guys. Now, we'll see that there are definitely some error or some uh, differences, okay, in the standard errors uh, of the parameter estimates. Now, this might be due to some numerical differences in the algorithm. Uh, so, for example, the treatment of initial conditions uh, because of some small number of observations, again, given the uh, Longley data set. And again, that's, we are getting that um, error in here again. So, for this, only valid for n is greater than 20. That's what some of that error is, because again, this is a small type data set. Um, I know that this was a quick and rough uh, generalized least squares example, but if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.